Hello, and welcome to Not Very Scary Stories. First of all, this will be our first Haunted History episode. The way I'll be handling these is basically I'll pick one or two actual people, places, or things to give you as much of a rundown on their history as I can. These will be less story based, unless I can specifically find stories to use for these topics that I can actually get permission to use. I'd like to leave these up to you whether you'd like to believe it. As I've said before that the point of this brand's video series at first was to prove whether ghosts exist or not, I still stand behind the sentiment that these could all be fake or real. You can decide for yourself. I wasn't positive on where to start for this, so I used a list called The History Behind 40 of the Most Haunted Places in America on Insider.com. Then I proceeded with research and stories that are backed by witnesses or more than one report. I'd like to thank you guys for the support thus far on all the platforms you can find us on, including YouTube. I'd also like to remind everyone that if you have any scary stories or experiences you'd like to share, email me at darkskygamenews at gmail.com and tell me how you'd like to be credited. I'm Zenith Dark Sky, and I'll be your host tonight. Enjoy. Eastern State Penitentiary is allegedly one of the most haunted places in the United States, let alone the world. It's been home to several notable criminals. You may have heard of it as a former temporary home to Al Capone himself, of all people. We will dip in and out of historical fact and tales from the haunted past of the penitentiary, even through all of this and the supposed evidence brought to you by many of the Paranormal Investigation series. Keep in mind, the staff will maintain that they run a haunted attraction. They don't actually try to say that this prison is definitely haunted. Before the opening of Eastern State, prisons were nothing more than holding pens for unwanted and corrupt. Men, women, and children were housed alongside petty criminals and violent killers. The Philadelphia Society for Alleviating the Miseries of Public Prisons, led by Benjamin Franklin, wanted to change these places into a facility of reform, instead of just outright punishment. As each inmate went to their work detail, they were made to wear heavy masks that prohibited communication with one another. The loneliness and isolation was sometimes too much for some prisoners, causing many to take their own lives at Eastern State Penitentiary. While no outright executions were saw to at Eastern State, hundreds of inmates died here from disease and old age, while at least two guards were murdered while the facility was active while many inmates were murdered as well, whether it be by inmates or staff. While the facility was built during the 1800s and there were many things being done wrong by the facility and its staff, things really picked up later in the 1900s. During the 1920s and 30s specifically, Chicago gangster Al Capone spent eight months at Eastern State Penitentiary and although his cell was probably one of the nicest at the time, he still complained he was haunted by a ghost. But not just any ghost, he was being haunted by the ghost of James Clark or Albert Kachalik, one of the victims of the St. Valentine's Day Massacre in Chicago, an infamous massacre carried out by Al Capone himself on one side where he had men line up several rival gang members on a wall and his men proceeded to unload on them. Other inmates had reported hearing Al Capone repeatedly scream and shout at someone named Jimmy. Capone even later claimed that Jimmy followed him past his time at Eastern State Penitentiary and even had mediums to help him out. During this time, Capone actually wasn't the most famous thing to come out of the penitentiary. The prison's most famous figure was actually Warden Herbert Hardboiled Smith who oversaw the facility during the 1920s and 30s. During this, the state only sent prisoners to Eastern State who needed Warden Smith's savage reform methods. At this point, the state had abandoned strict solitary confinement and two to three prisoners shared cells. However, 
that didn't stop the warden from coming in with other and sometimes more savage tactics, like the water bath, where inmates were dunked in a bath of ice cold water and then hung from a wall for the night. There were reports that say this was particularly popular during winter, leading to ice forming on their skin. There was the mad chair, where inmates were strapped tightly to a chair, restricting any and all movement for days on end, sometimes even leading to amputations and sometimes death. Also, there were periods of forced starvation. There was also the iron gag, in which inmates' hands were tied behind their back and strapped to an iron collar in their mouth, so that any movement caused the tongue to tear and bleed horribly. In the 1940s, both prisoners and guards began to have a number of unusual experiences and unexplained sightings. Many of these events involved shadow people and unexplained noises. Notable hauntings include different stories from different cell blocks. Cell block 12 is known for visitors reporting that they had heard echoing voices and cackling. Cell block 6 is famous for its shadowy figures moving along the walls. Cell block 4 is famous for many visitors reporting ghostly faces throughout. One terrifying story and probably the most famous story from Eastern State comes from a man named Gary Johnson who helped maintain the locks at the prison. In the early 1990s, he was working to remove a 140 year old lock from the cell door at the prison when a force overcame him and paralyzed him temporarily. Some believe when he removed the key, it opened a gateway that offered the spirits caught behind its bars a pathway out. He told of experiencing an odd out of body state as he was drawn towards the negative energy which burst through the cell. Faces appeared on the cell wall while hundreds of distorted forms swirled around the cell block and one form seemed to even beckon to the locksmith. Many people have reported seeing a guard in one of the towers even though there are none. Numerous visitors say that they have heard the sounds of cell doors opening and slamming shut while they're on tour or just visiting. Throughout the prison, visitors and staff reported disembodied screams, cries of pain, sadistic laughter, and whispers. Others have reported the sounds of cell door handles jiggling, furniture being dragged across floors, large objects rolling on the roof, and ghostly footsteps. The catwalk area inside the facility has had several paranormal events occur, including a shadowy figure being caught on camera, temperature fluctuations, and even capturing a voice saying, I'm lonely, on EVP. Now even through all this, I feel I must reiterate that the staff maintains that the facility isn't haunted, instead that they run a haunted attraction. Fittingly enough, they have an event every year called The Terror Behind Walls, where they now have up to six high startle, low gore attractions. For a place that seems to want to honor the dead and avoid a negative light, for some reason they sure don't do much to avoid it. Probably pretty hard to do when even some of your staff members report seeing the terrifyingly haunting faces in the walls, or when you hear the screams of the tortured souls within. The King's Tavern was built in 1769, which makes it the oldest building in Natchez, Mississippi. A building with this much history is extremely likely to be ripe with ghosts, and if the stories are true, this one is no different. While the tavern was originally built to be a blockhouse for the nearby fort in 1789, ownership was taken over by New Yorker Richard King. The business quickly became very successful due to local boatmen, even causing Richard King and his wife to experience a small-scale celebrity status. Outlaws began to settle in or near the town, robbing and killing local boatmen as they left for their homes. None other than the infamous Hart Brothers even stayed at the hotel for a time. A little background for those of you that don't know, the Hart Brothers... They are sometimes referred to as America's first serial killers, as they took delight in torturing, mutilating, and eventually killing.
killing their victims. In the 1930s, long after the King's Tavern was sold to the Postlewaite family for over 150 years to be a private family home, three bodies were found. The skeletons were of two men and one woman. A jeweled dagger was found with the bodies as well, which could mean that it was the murder weapon for these victims. Some think these were bodies left behind from the Hart brothers, while some believe Richard King's wife had her very own dark past. Richard King was a well-loved man, a local celebrity of sorts during the time that he owned the tavern, even being the one that actually made it a tavern. And when he bought the building, he brought his family with him as well. The family included his wife. While Richard King may or may not have been a criminal, like many of his guests were, he wasn't without any wrongdoing. King supposedly had a longer term affair with a young woman named Madeline, who now has her own picture decorating a wall in King's Tavern. Fair skinned with dark brown ringlets and an innocent smile, it's no wonder when Miss King found out about this affair, she wasn't the happiest who would be. After Mrs. King learned of this alleged affair with her husband, Madeline soon went missing. She was never found. Many believe this body of a woman found in the wall is Madeline's own. Oddly enough, most people believe her spirit to be the primary spirit that now haunts the halls of King's Tavern due to its mischievous nature. In the upstairs of the tavern, many strange happenings have been reported. Many witnesses have reported seeing reflections in the mirror when they were alone. Some have reported that you could wave your hand a few inches over beds and you'd feel warm spots, almost as if someone had been laying there just a few seconds before. Along with this, there have been reports of mischief, again believed to be the ghost of Madeline. Something likes to sometimes just open doors, cause cold spots in the air, and move things. One man even reported that the cap of his root beer that he had laid back on the top of the bottle seemingly just flew across the table about three feet. You can even find this in a review on a website for the King's Tavern. Wiley Harp, one of the Harp brothers, is said to haunt the tavern as well along with one of his victims, which would explain the other bodies found behind the fireplace. There's even an EVP captured that is supposedly the voice of Wiley Harp. Apparently, there is also a story that claims that Harp once got so annoyed with an infant crying that he ripped the baby from its mother's arms and slammed it against the ground, killing it instantly. Ever since that event, several witnesses have reported hearing the cries of a baby throughout the upstairs halls, but no baby can be found. Not convinced? You can actually go and eat at the tavern yourself, as it's still open and ran by a nationally known chef. But take caution when going to pay a visit. I'd suggest grabbing one of their flatbread meals or perhaps one of their pizzas. Have a drink too. Hang out by the fireplace if you can, even if it's not a lit fire, because sometimes you can still feel the heat of the three bodies constantly warming the area.